Hi, my name is Bram. Today I'm going to be doing a quick video demonstration on checking Pistons and DeBoer clearances on a Subaru EJ255-257 uh, engine. Piston DeBoer clearance is usually set by the engine machinist to when he's honing the cylinders. Today I'm just going to be double checking, I won't be able to actually adjust anything, I'm just going to be double checking what the uh, clearance is and I'm going to go through the process of how to check that. In order to check it, you're going to need a few tools. You need a micrometer big enough for the piston, a bore dial gauge um, to measure the bore. You'll need the pistons, piston, and the engine block. First, what we have to do is measure the piston's diameter. Um, when measuring a piston, you have to measure down and take the measurements at a set point on the skirt of the piston. The reason is the pistons are not cylindrical, they're actually tapered or barreled um, and the top, you'll find the top is less diameter than the skirts but the top will be exposed to more heat and will expand more. So because of this barreled shape we need to have an exact location where we're going to measure um, to get an accurate measurement. Um, now we call for 21.5 millimetres from the bottom of the oil uh, ring land, the third ring. Um, so I'll actually cross, put a little X there where we're going to be aiming to take the measurements. Um, so what we do, so we get the micrometer, this is a 3 to 4 inch. Um, you carefully slide the piston in to the micrometer, uh, aiming for our our crosshairs, where we're going to take our measurement from. Carefully rock the piston around and tighten up on our um, micrometer. Just, just jiggle the piston around so that we can get it sort of squared up in the micrometer. We can lock it off and we can carefully take the piston out. Um, now, the measurement that we're getting is going to be 3 inches because it's a 3 to 4 inch micrometer. First decimal is going to be the nine, um, and there's going to second decimal is going to be a two. Third decimal is a three, and our fourth decimal, uh, if we roll over to Vernia, and what's that? It's about a seven, six or seven, seven. So we've got a three point nine two three seven of an inch. Um, piston. What we then do is we use our bore dial gauge. Um, I've already preset the uh, anvils in here so that we've got a we're going to be me measuring within the correct range. But as you can see, there's a whole heap to choose from, different spaces and extensions. So this will fit quite a large number of different bores and and stuff. Um, once you've worked out the uh, range you're going to measure, you can install the uh, ball gauge inside the micrometer and you're going to rock it backwards and forwards looking for the lowest measurement in between the micrometer. So if I go crooked like that we can see it's quite a large, it's up to a 5 power. As I rock it, it gets narrower and narrower and we're looking for the shortest measurement which is, means it's perfectly squared in the micrometer. Um, as you can see, the needle is touching on zero. I've already previously zeroed this needle, no, zeroed the face to to that measurement anyways. Um, but if it wasn't, you could actually rotate the face of the micrometer and that will, yeah, so you can set, you can set your zero point. With your zero point set uh, to that size piston, you can then put the micrometer, I'll just get the camera right, into the bore. You're going to be measuring in the same plane that you've um, measured the piston and again you're going to rock the, the bore gauge looking for the narrowest measurement between the bores, meaning that your, your, your gauge is square. So as we, as we rock it, and we say for that for example, we're, we're definitely not uh, parallel or perpendicular to the bores and we've got quite a large measurement. As I rock the bore gauge we can get to, that's about the shortest measurement there. And then as we go back the other way, 
that are rating it increases. So we're looking for the shortest measurement and we're going to rock it backwards and forwards and we're getting bang on three thou piston to bore there. If I go down and take a measurement halfway down the bore and repeat the process, uh, bang on three there and again we go down towards the low end of the bore and rock it again and we've got about at the very bottom three and a half thou. Um, when this engine was honed, it was actually torque plate honed, meaning that it had one of these bolted to the top of the um, deck surface and torqued to the specs uh, called for when, when assembling the engine. That actually distorts the cases uh, as it loads them up and that will actually take the cylinder's dimensions and, and, and shift it around a bit. For this demonstration here, I don't actually have the torque plate on, but to get a perfect um, measurement, and, and when setting it as well, when honing it, you, the idea would be to try and have it with the torque plate installed to pre-distort that block to what it's gonna be when it is assembled. Um, we can go through all the other cylinders as well. One, two, three, four, and check all them. Off camera, I've actually already gone through and worked out which pistons best fit to each which bore. Um, this one, number one, for number one. Um, it is interesting to note, I did this test earlier today when it was about 15 degrees, um, and the measurements have changed between now and then when it's 20 degrees. And using a uh, non-contact thermometer, you can see the block is right now 18 degrees. Pistons 21 degrees, micrometers 20 degrees, so we're about the range where it should be, but I don't have the torque plate installed. Uh, so that is how you go about checking your piston to bore clearances.